Oh, hi everyone. Uh, continue my physics. Physics from nature's perspective. I'll represent nature. And last, uh, I'll continue uh, talk about uh, talk uh, talk about the uh, the gravity. Uh, last time we we discussed the uh, the. Uh, Newton's shell theorem, which uh, uh, r really tells us that uh, any force or any yeah any force distributed like uh, uh, distance square, one over distance square, can be or a uh, a distribution around a, a uniformly, evenly distributed around the sphere can be considered that uh, uh, it's concentrated uh, at the uh, the center. So, so apply the Newton's shell theorem to the electric situation to each atom. The simplest case is hydrogen. A one negative charge uh, at the um, electron and one positive charge at the, uh, the nuclei. The positive electric field of the center and the negative electric field of the, uh, the electron are going around to the center, they cancel the, each other out partially then there also there, there there's something left over there's a residue there's a leakage and uh, both positive and the negative electric fields gonna expand uh, or extend into the universe and forever and ever and of course, the, the more complicated atoms, uh, just uh, just more electrons and, and more uh, uh, protons and uh, more charges. Uh, not exactly multiply the um, uh, the hydrogen more or less the same, and there uh, there are multiple uh, electrons, uh, uh, negative electric field, and the multiple. Uh, Protons, uh, a positive electric field, uh, can't partially cancel each other, and then the rest going to uh, extend uh, into the into the the space forever, or actually uh, fill up the space. Since gravity. At, at least it started off as a force, and, and then Einstein's uh, uh, general relativity it gave it a, a new point of view or a new explanation as a, as a, uh, a curvature of the space. However, it started off as a force, so <laughs> or at least there is a force uh, perspective from the nature. Uh, let's uh, uh, start from uh, uh, the force as well, because that's how humans started uh, uh, recognizing it. And I'm using human la human language, even if I am the nature, the nature, I uh, still have to use human language and uh, to communicate with the human. So I, uh, so force was first. Relatively speaking, uh, 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 introduced by Newton as well. It's the uh, Newton's second law, uh, F equals to m a. The a is clear enough. Is the acceleration, no matter how uh, how you're uh, you're you're traveling. Uh, whether it's uh, it's in a three dimension space or four or five or two, and, and you're uh, 
acceleration is just uh, just your um, where you travel. And uh, if you travel as a, 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 a along a straight line, and that just that's one dimensional. It doesn't matter whether it, you know that one that that line is in the in the three dimensional in the in the in the uh, four dimension. That doesn't matter. It's just just that that's where you travel. And the mass m mathematically as us living in the three dimensional space, the m is in the mathematical term is the volume, three-dimensional volume. And that is a mathematical interpretation. However, because we live in a three-dimensional space and uh, physics need to be, uh, had to be uh, applied uh, to our problems. So, Every physics formula gonna eventually become a mathematical kind of formula, and then all the physical concept will gonna have a mathematical uh, uh, correspondence. In this case, the mass corresponding volume, and consequentially, <laughs> consequently, the F also carries. A uh, a sign or a, a character or uh, or a uh, nature of a, of a dimension. So f equal to m a. There is a unwritten uh, 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 sub index you might call it uh, of a, of a, a dimension where the M is a uh, 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 three-dimensional mass, or two-dimensional mass, or four-dimensional mass, or uh, so on, and uh, and the associated uh, F uh, will have to be the same dimension. And uh, and then it is interesting because probably I wouldn't say because. Uh, Einstein caused it, but nevertheless, when when general relativity was uh, was uh, introduced to the public, and a higher dimension became a, a, a you know a, 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 a public interest interest, and see, although although Einstein's theory that the the the, the four dimension the, the the three is still the space, and four is the is the time. But uh, later on, uh, physicists, you know, added a lot of more dimensions and and got even more complicated. However, we still live in a three dimensional space. So, higher dimension open up a lot of uh, discussions or. Uh, about the uh, the geometry of a, of a higher dimensional space, and the their science fictions, their uh, people uh, 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 teach uh, uh, physics, or teach science, or or do science work, and you know try to understand uh, what is the difference between say a higher dimension and a lower dimension say like a four and three or three and four or a three and two uh, what are the differences and then the most obvious difference is that the higher dimension you have a, a higher um, a, a freedom so to speak and you have one more dimension to move around Therefore, you could, uh, you know, go, f uh, uh, go leave vertically, let's say, uh, 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 from where you are or where you live, used to or into another dimension. So, what is the in, into the other dimension? What does it really that means? 
a lot of science fictions and uh, and uh, and uh, scientists uh, only see see the the positive side, namely gain freedom. Not only they go to higher dimension gain freedom, they think they go to lower dimensional uh, uh, space. They also uh, are freer. Because you know, from a higher dimension, you could uh, peek into uh, interior of a, of a, of a, the uh, an inside, uh, uh, say, container uh, of a, a two dimensional container. Because a two dimensional container is just a circle, and a three dimensional container is a um, is a sphere, or is a box. A two dimensional uh, container is just a, a square. Therefore. They, uh, they they think uh, you know in a three dimensional a three dimensional animal are gonna have a, a, a advantage in two dimensional space. Uh, I'll, I'll gonna, I'm gonna tell you that's not the case because in three dimensional your volume, I mean your mass is volume. So in order for you to go to two dimensional uh, space, if if there are or has a two-dimensional space and two-dimensional animal. In order for you to be there, your mass had to be translated into two-dimensional mass. Volume had to be somehow translated into area. And, uh, and currently, mathematics, positive volume means the wide, the infinite area. And uh, conversely, positive area means zero volume. So if, if go to higher dimensional gain freedom, say, say suppose a two-dimensional animal somehow left uh, the, the, the two dimension and, and then lift up into three dimensional space. Its force or its mass cannot accept three dimensional force. So three dimensional force has no effect on them because three dimensional force is, is it's a, it's just positive in three dimensional space and a two-dimensional area in three-dimensional as a mass going to be zero. So whatever force you, 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 you couldn't affect a zero mass. Vice versa, if a, a, a force in three-dimensional space, a, a three-dimensional mass, in the uh, two-dimensional space, you are too big. And uh, two-dimensional force gonna have trouble moving you. <laughs> so, and you probably gonna have trouble moving around. And uh, I know, I know, of course, mathematic, mathematics is only uh, a language describing the nature. And uh, our mass isn't exactly isn't the same as volume. However, the two-dimensional uh, uh, mass not exactly the area. Nevertheless, the two-dimensional animal, if there were any, and their mass is somewhat close to area, can be uh, described as such. And in three-dimensional space, it's close to volume. Therefore, the difference between two-dimensional mass and three-dimensional mass is that one is really, really small, another is really, really big. And so, uh, so are their forces. And that's the difference between two-dimension and three-dimension, or between lower dimension and higher dimension. And the uh, from the Newton's formula, you can tell the force is associated with the mass, and in three dimensional is uh, is area uh, volume. Two dimensional going to be area, and in order for these two to connect, 
you need a new mathematics uh, and also something probably more I don't know okay that's what's well, darn it's 15 minutes already all right I hope uh, that's somewhat entertaining all right so talk to you later bye